Hello and welcome to Little Things with Amber Elby Swenson. We are continuing our series on singleness with an episode that I'm called, I'm calling Single on God's Time. I'm joined today with a very special guest. Her name is Dorothy Schluter. So thank you for joining me, Dorothy. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you. We have never met before. So no. this is our first time. So yes. we're going to get to know each other a little bit. Okay. So Dorothy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where have you worked? What have you done? Where do you live? That type of thing. Okay, I grew up in the Milwaukee area. Uh, I worked, uh, I'm, I'm a speech pathologist by profession, and I worked uh, 39 years at Marquette University teaching in the speech pathology program, and uh, that was a wonderful experience. Um, after my second husband passed, I uh, my in-laws had bought a place in Florida. And so uh, I went down to visit and I bought a place in Florida. And that was in um, 2011. And now I'm a Florida resident and I'm going to move down there full time. Okay, hold on. Where in Florida? <laughs> Fort Myers. <gasps> I've that rings a bell. Fort Myers all the time. Yeah. I have. Oh, good. I have a friend who had a home down there. She's a snowbird, and she uh -huh. lets us use their house every now and then. So oh we've goodness. gone down there about five times. Okay, I that's love Fort wonderful. Myers. I, Wait I a love second. Fort Myers. Did your house have any damage from Hurricane Ian? No, uh, I'm in a condo, and it's hurricane proofed. It met the code. Oh, there was absolutely no damage. Wow. The only thing, uh, the power was out so long that my, and then that hot, wet air was in your unit, Mold. my washer rusted out. So I had to get a new washer and dryer. So that was kind of peripheral damage. And a couple light things blew out when the power came back on, but that's all. There was no external damage. Um, no, we survived very well, but we're 40 minutes inland from the Gulf. Mm -hmm. So that makes a difference. But there was still a lot of damage in Fort Myers, in the oh, city yeah. of Fort Myers. Um, and no, we escaped all that. So when are you moving down permanently? Uh, as soon as I sell my house here. Oh, so okay. I have no idea what the timetable is going to be. Okay. But um, that's for health reasons. That climate is much better for me. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I From just snow to sunshine. Come on. Yeah. I, no I argument had, with me. Really, it's it's uh, it's kind of my happy place, and I have really yeah. good friends down there. So, um, I'm, and my sister-in-law, brother-in-law go down, they're snowbirds. So they go down. So I'll have them there, um, half of the year. And, um, so yeah, it, it's a big move, but, um, I, I think I'm ready. Just I'm ready. ready and to... I'm, I'm a lot younger than you are and I'm ready. So. <laughs> <laughs> ready for sunshine every day. Yeah. And initially I, uh, I bought it for an investment, which turned out to be really wise. And mm -hmm. uh, I rented it in season for eight years. So wow. I was in and out, but I didn't actually live there. Yeah. So that's changed now. Awesome. Yeah. So our series is on singleness and you have unfortunately been widowed twice. So I want to get yes. into that a little bit. Talk to me about your first marriage. How long were you married? How old when you're, were you when your first husband died? Just give us kind of the background. My first husband was Harry Wood, and he was from England. How did you meet a man from England? We lived in the same apartment building, oh. and I, we had known each other, but, you know, no, no big thing. Then his mother came to visit from England, and we met at the washer's. And she really, really liked me. And she, thought, you know, she kind of said, what's the matter with you? You know, what, what's wrong with the lady in number three, you know? So then we started going out together. And I have to say my mother-in-law in England was always one of my biggest supporters. So, you know, really nice thing. Yeah. So and did then, you go back and forth all the time? Yes, we did. And I still have a niece there who I just adore. And I had a niece here who uh, was in Virginia who passed, but uh, we were so close. Mm. So I, but her kids now keep in touch with me. So I have family from the first marriage as well. Yeah, that's but wonderful. Not anywhere close. 
Yeah. Uh, we were married just over 30 years. Oh, wow. And uh, yes. And um, uh, when my husband passed, I was 62, almost 63 years old. And did it come as a shock? Was it expected? Was it, he suffering from an illness or? It, it was expected. He had a uh, brain surgery and a, ma a massive stroke that followed. And so he never really recovered. So it was a long period where he was really uh, paralyzed and struggling. So it wasn't a shock. It was just a long, prolonged illness. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you have children? No, no we didn't. Okay. So after that first episode of becoming a widow, you must have gone mm -hmm. through quite a few changes. Um, mm -hmm. You were married mm -hmm. for quite a long time. So yes. what were some of the things that you remember thinking, man, this is so hard? Or what are some of the changes that really stuck out to you? Well, I was still working because I was 62 going on 63. Uh, I think the two big things were that I was alone mm. and, you know, you go home after work and you're alone. And also that now you're in charge of making all the decisions. And that that's just a huge responsibility when you've been sharing it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what stands out. I had to figure out where I was now. Yeah. So what did you find help? helped you get through the loneliness that first time? Uh, well, I was still working. So I was out and yeah. with people all day. Uh, so the evenings were the loneliest. But um, I was busy. And um, it just it was just um, I, I don't know, it just got a little bit better with time. Okay. So yeah. how how much time passed before you got married again? Uh, two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. And then how long did your second marriage last? Well, that, that's very unfortunate. It lasted two years and nine months. My second husband was David Schluter, my last name now. Uh, and he grew up in this area. We were in grade school together. So we both grew up in this Milwaukee area together. And uh, my second husband was very healthy. We both were when we married. So we had a lot of plans. We were um, retiring, both of us, and, you know, for travel and so forth. And uh, he got a form of cancer that just went very fast. So I knew in January, they said he had a year to live, but he only lived seven months after wow. that. So it was uh, the... It was quick and uh, irreversible. Man, I'm so sorry. So did you notice a difference? Because here you were alone again from the first mm -hmm. time to the second right. time, or was it much the same? Oh, it's hard to say. I mean, the grieving was there the same. Yeah. Uh, the, and I wasn't working, so I lacked that structure. So right. I think that might have been a little harder. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, well, here I am again, right. um, unexpectedly. And uh, we had plans, you know, for travel and um, different activities. And, and that was gone, just gone. Did you end up doing some of those things by yourself? Did you end up traveling at all? Um, not right away. We had yeah. uh, we were signed up for a Holy Land tour, Aww. and then he passed, so I, you know, canceled out. But then I went two years later with uh, a friend. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, my sister in law's sister, and uh, so that you know, I was determined to do that, but it was not the original plan. Right, right. But somehow you were able to sort of pivot and yeah. find yeah. somebody to yeah. do stuff with. Have you found mm -hmm. that's been a key to sort of keeping the loneliness at bay? I think so. Uh, I like to be busy. I like to be out of the house and all that helps. So if I would be really sad or really depressed, I would say, just do something, anything, get out. And that would help. Um, I suppose it was a distraction, yeah. but uh, it helped um, 
alter the mood. Mm -hmm. Are there still things that are uncomfortable or hard? How many years has it been now since your second husband died? Oh, he died in 09. So okay, so it's been a while. At, yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Are there some um, things that are still hard and uncomfortable or have you still, kind of adjusted? I, I've adjusted, but what's hard, I think, is like since then I've had two major surgeries and he's not there to be with me. Right. And, you know, your plan when you're older and you marry is you're going to be there for each other. Right. And that um, that was gone. So um, I had to rely on friendship of other people. And, and that that you feel that. Um, yeah, so, uh, that, that was hard, but, um, I think having real good Christian friends who are there mm -hmm. for me has helped tremendously. And, um, through my second husband, I, uh, well, now I have a sister-in-law, brother-in-law. I have two granddaughters and three great grandbabies. Oh, so man. I feel like, like God gave me a family through my second marriage. And, and that's real important to me. Wow, that's really wonderful. Where yeah. have you found your Christian friends? How, are some of these friends that have been lifelong or, you know, like you said, that second marriage provided this family that you didn't have mm -hmm. before? So I didn't have. Yeah, it, where have you found a, your friends? It's a combination. It's a combination. I've had lifelong friends from work. Mm -hmm. um, well, not lifelong, but from work. And, yeah. um, and then, of course, the new family that I got through marriage. Um, and then I had some family friends, well, relatives left from my first marriage, but they're all gone now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of diminishing as yeah. you get older that you lose friends that are even younger than yourself. What are some things that have happened along the way with either the first or the second spouse dying? What are some things that people do without even thinking sometimes that maybe hurt you or even offend you? The, the only thing I can think of is that they don't understand that grief goes on for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so like, say they give you a year and then you're like, well, I don't understand why, you know, this is bothering you or why are you feeling sad today? Um, so I think they don't understand that everyone grieves in their own way on their own time. And, uh, but they didn't mean, they just didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think oversimplifying your grief, well, you just need to get out more. Or you need to, you know, go shopping yeah. or do something nice for yourself. So um, again, they're meaning to be helpful, but it's not really helpful. Yeah, and you can't really make sense of grief. That's what I'm understanding right. from my, my mother-in-law has been a widow for 18 years. Uh -huh. And I remember her saying the seventh year was the harder, hardest of them. And yeah. there was no rhyme or reason. No. Nothing certain, you know, happened right. that seventh year, but it was just all of a sudden that year, it was every day yeah. was really hard for her to get through. And, and like you said, why the seventh year? Why now? Why can't you, you know, pick one foot up and keep going? And no. she didn't know. She didn't it, know it's, why. It's not a, a line, you know, like you start here and it's bad and then it's better, better, better. It's, uh, I think it's almost um, not cyclical, but, you know, you'll be fine and then it'll kind of hit you again. Mm -hmm. So it just takes a long time to work through all that till you kind of steady out. And then you're still, the sadness will never go away, but you kind of become more steady in, um, you know, in your daily routines and friendships and, you know. Uh, so, I, yeah, if you've not had a loss, it's hard. People don't really understand that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they mean to be unkind, but they just haven't been there. And from what I've gathered, every loss is different. It's a very yes, it different is. thing if you yes. lose a child. Very oh, different yes. thing. Absolutely. Very different thing if you lose a sibling. You know, some people lose a sibling in a car accident when they're, you know, right. 20 years old or something. That's a very different thing. And a yes. spouse is a very, very different thing. Yes, it is. So yes. it is so important that we don't minimize or, or like mm -hmm. you said, just sort of mm -hmm. just get over it. You know, come on, just do this. Yeah. You you had yeah. mentioned that going out, getting out of the house was one way that you coped. Is there are there other things that you did that you noticed that really 
um, sort of helped alleviate some of that pain when you felt that grief coming back on you? Oh, I don't know. I, I've always been the kind of person who has to get out of the house. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that, you know, that that was a new thing after my grief. It was just the way I've always been. Like yeah. I like to be out and about. But um, things that help. Um, yeah, I think um, your perspective changes. At first, you're just, I was so stunned after two years and nine months that yeah. here I am again. I was just stunned. And I think I, I was talking to my friend Amy. I think my feelings were hurt that God did this. Like I was wondering you know, I if know you, were you love angry. me. No, not angry. My feelings were hurt, actually. Yeah. I know you love me, but you did this. You brought this person <laughs> into my life and then just took him away. And um so so that was part of grieving, I think that uh not that I ever question that God was entitled to do this. That right. wasn't the issue. So I wasn't angry, but I was confused and mm -hmm. bewildered. Like, why? What, like, what was the purpose of this? Right. All, to go through this. But now that it's many years and I'm older too, looking back, I can see a lot of things that God brought about that uh, wouldn't have happened had I not, number one, married David, and number two, then been widowed. So uh, growing close to my granddaughters, uh, being a big part of the great grandbabies being born, uh, I can see, and and I might mention too that I, I think I changed, we both changed each other's lives for the better. So that I can see. Tell me in what God's ways. Hand in that. Um, well, my granddaughters, um, th first of all, let me just say their, their life has been, um, you know, a little difficult mm -hmm. and they thought the world of my husband, their grandpa, David, and then they kind of, we bonded and mm -hmm. then, uh, more than if David and I were still a couple, you know, mm -hmm. so that I began to spend more time with them and, um, that led to a stronger bond. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know exactly how that is because that's exactly yeah. what happened with my father-in-law. My father-in-law mm -hmm. and I were very, very close. In yeah. fact, to the point that I always went to him immediately when I came to the house. I always went to him, uh -huh. by him, talked to him. We were just we uh -huh. bonded. You know, we just saw yes. eye to eye. We were very much the same, like energetic. And, uh -huh. and when he died, I almost had to get to know my mother-in-law in a way that I never... I before. never had before because yeah, yeah. I had always gone to him. So it was very similar. The and whole the, dynamic right. changes, right? Yeah. And it is a gift. It is a gift mm -hmm. to get. It is a gift. You know, and to know uh, drawing close to my David's brother and wife, yeah. my brother in law's sister in law, that was a, a real positive for me. Yeah. And we're still real, real close. So that's awesome. How yeah. has your faith sustained you in all this? What what part has faith played? I think I always like to think of the big picture. And in the big picture, um, these things happen. It's not unusual to lose people. It's the right. way it is. Um, that because of his faith, his strong faith, I know he's okay. Mm -hmm. So I, and a, at one time I said, okay, did I really want to keep him here longer suffering or did I want to let go? But right. that was a while later. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. say that right away. But I think knowing that uh, he's okay, he's okay, and um, I'll see him again, that's mm -hmm. been a big factor. Yeah. Yeah, and death is a part of life, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's something we all have to come to terms with. It just comes close to us every now and then, and we start mm -hmm. remembering that this isn't our home and that yeah. we're we're living as citizens somewhere else. But we can go a long time forgetting that until yes. death yeah. strikes us in the face again, and then we have and to then, remember. Right. What role did the people in your church play throughout these experiences? Oh, I, I don't know. They were very kind. Everyone was kind. Mm -hmm. um and tried to be helpful or you know tried to be there um 
pastor was very uh, kind and encouraging. Um, he felt he brought us together because we met in church. Well, oh. actually, we had gone to school together, but then all the years in between, we lost track. So he kind of thought he brought us together in Bible class. And then, um, and, and then you know, it was over. So um, I think they were very, uh, they were very sympathetic. Um, I, I can't really say because my my friends outside the church were likewise very uh, mm -hmm. caring, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that my faith made it different. I don't know that my church group made it different. Okay. That's good to know. Dorothy, I know that you had mentioned earlier that, you know, there's no timeline to grief and that sometimes people had said things like, you know, you just have to get over this. Um, one of the things that came out when I uh, interviewed my friend Rhoda, who's been single her whole life long, she mentioned that, you know, holidays were a time that it was nice when other people noticed that she was alone mm -hmm. and maybe did something. Are there other mm -hmm. things that friends of widows could keep in mind to help ease the burden at all? Well, that's a very good point. We didn't talk about holidays, but uh, that they can be rough. Um, one thing I found very helpful um, were, for example, I called my insurance agent and because of all the changes we had to make. And he said, I wish I had the words to say to you to make it better, but I don't. So what can I do to help you? Oh, wow. I thought that was wonderful. That was wonderful, you know. And I, I think um, friends who just are with you, just sit with you or listen or just are there for you, they don't have to say a lot. They can't fix it, mm -hmm. you know. And I think um, what was so great was he acknowledged he couldn't fix it. Yeah. But he said, but I can help you other ways. And I, I think that means a lot, people that um, are there to help you or um, even just on practical matters. Oh, well, I know a good handyman. I can give mm -hmm. you his number, you know, things like that. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if the stats are to be believed, mm -hmm. most of us are going to end up to be widows because right. women tend to outlive men. Um, do you have any advice for younger do. women in terms of preparing? I, I do, because obviously I know a lot of widows and, uh, just seeing in my family, women that became widowed. Um, I, I think I was very blessed because, um, I didn't marry real young. So I had been independent for a good number of years. So I knew how to take care of things. I knew how to manage money, um, so as my husband became, you know, incapacitated um, and then ultimately died, I was I was pretty well positioned to know financially what to do, mm -hmm. um, how to take care of the house we lived in, you know, just simple practical things that you have to take care of your house, your car, um, your taxes, um, that it was totally up to me now. So... Um, I think women really need to be more savvy maybe about their finances and, and many are, some aren't, uh, mm -hmm. about if they have a house to maintain, you know, what does that all entail? And I think not to be afraid to ask for help. Um, I think we can't assume that they have kids living next door that are gonna run over and help. So I think, you know, getting um, help with your taxes, getting a handyman, getting um, someone for financial management. And then um, I think it, it's still hard knowing that you're totally responsible for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, that's a, a, a big thing. Um, Cause, and again, I don't have children, so that might be different, but I do feel very responsible for myself and keeping up and knowing what's going on and being wise about things. Um, so I think the more prepared women are to be independent, which sounds counterintuitive, but the more, the more independent they're prepared to be before they have to be, right. um, 
the more knowledge they have, the uh, it's going to make it easier, not the grief and the missing, but just the day to day living. Mm -hmm. Did both of your husbands have like funeral plans and you knew where you were going to bury him and what you were going to do and all that? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Did that fall uh, on I, you then? Yes, yes. Um, it did. Um, then after my first husband died, I didn't think I would marry again. So then I bought, you know, we bought a double plot. I got the stone <laughs> with my name on it. <laughs> and, uh, and of course. Then, uh, <laughs> you know, and then, um, so then when I married again and my second husband died, I actually managed to get a plot next door. So we're kind of in a row. <laughs> It's kind of comforting to me. <laughs> There's nothing and, wrong with that. No, no. Uh, but it did fall on me both times to do all the planning. Yeah. yeah. And that might be just worth saying it's good to have a conversation. I know several women whose husbands have died unexpectedly and they, they totally hadn't talked stunned. about where they were going to be buried. Right. That or, I didn't have that. Yeah. yeah. Or what yeah. they wanted done or if, did they want to be cremated or buried or... Exactly. Yeah. And it's probably never too early to start having those conversations, I suppose. I find, especially with my first husband, he didn't want to talk about it at all. Okay. Or, um, you know, like um, financially, well, there was just the two of us. So that was pretty simple. But um, he didn't, he didn't want to talk about it or make any arrangements. So, um, so I just did it. Um, my second husband, I knew, wanted to be cremated, mm -hmm. and so I did that. But um, but he's also buried in a plot, mm -hmm. you know. So, so are your friends mostly? Um, I know you have your grandchildren and your great grands and that type of thing. But are your friends, the people you talk to, mm -hmm. hang mm -hmm. out with, are they mostly widows, or you do you do a lot of the multi generational? It, it's mixed. It's a okay. mix. Yeah, some are divorced, some are widowed, some um, one or two never married. Um, it's and some are you know married for many years. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix. Yeah, I just know with one of my other interviews, she had mentioned a woman who had been widowed only for a year that she found a lot of comfort in the first year, just in being with other widows who kind of knew and mm -hmm. understood what she mm -hmm. was going through. Did you find the same thing initially? Or you didn't, you didn't really need that. You know, initially, when my first husband died, I was 62 and working. I really didn't know a lot of widows. The, I the, suppose. But as I've gotten older, you know, the second time I was widowed, I was, um, well, what was I? I can't think. I was older anyway. Um, so then there were more widows that I knew. Uh, and now I know. A, a lot of the women are, mm -hmm. most of the women I know are widows. Mm -hmm. So that changed as I got older. And um, it, but initially I didn't really know widows. I was working, everybody was married or looking to get married or, you know, uh, divorced or single. Um, I've, I've known many widows the last 10 years or so. I tend to have a lot of older friends. And so mm -hmm. um, I have quite a few friends who are widows and I've learned a lot from watching their life mm -hmm. and seeing how they depend on each other. But I've also been very inspired by their faith and just mm -hmm. the quiet stillness that they go they They don't say it doesn't hurt. No, it, but they more hurt. or less. They more or less say, you know, I don't have a lot of options. I just have to go through the hurt. Yeah. And trust yeah. that God has a plan and a purpose yeah. and that he will take care of me. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where you live throughout your days. I One thing, and I said this to a friend, I said, I don't think I'll ever be as happy as I was like married, you know, and especially with my second husband. But I feel content now. And okay. I think that's a kind of happiness. It's not the woohoo, you know, I'm, we're having so much fun kind of thing, or we're taking this big trip. It's more like a contentment. And that that's a form of happiness, I think, too. Mm -hmm. And that's at beautiful. my age, you know, you, you don't, 
I, I mean, I'm still out and about a lot, but you you don't um, have that driving need to, you know, just be go 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 all the time. You're more mm-hmm. you're more settled. Yeah, I suppose you've had many mm-hmm. years now to sort of adjust to this and right realize that this life is fleeting and it's full of perils and heartaches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. There's a better life coming and your for husbands sure. are already enjoying it. So Yep. For sure. Absolutely. That's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for your time and for um, just giving us something to think about mull over. I certainly have been taking notes from several of my widow friends who tell me mm-hmm. to get things. I actually had a widow friend, my good neighbor, who has been my neighbor for 26 and a half years. She just sold her house two years after her husband mm-hmm. died. And before she left, she gave me a list of things I needed to get in order. So <laughs> things like not just, you know, you think just, just the will, you know, you think if you've got a will that you're good. Yes. And she's like, no, you need to know passwords and you need bank things. And oh, yeah. She gave yeah. me a whole beautiful list and I of course have none of them done. So it was, it was very nice of her to have this list and to give it to me to, you know, should the unexpected happen, sure. to at least be a little bit more prepared than you mm-hmm. would be if you were caught totally off guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you need to be more, I don't know what's the word, Proactive. I, I hate to say, yeah, proactive is a good word, I think, uh, even before. I mean, just as you age, you need to say, hey, what do I need to keep track of? What mm-hmm. do I need to, you know, know as things keep changing? Um, and what a blessing, not just for you, if you do mm-hmm. that, but for your family and for other people. Mm-hmm. My uncle mm-hmm. died unexpectedly just a couple of weeks ago. And Uh, When my cousin went into his room, he had everything just, I mean, as organized and beautiful, like do this, do this, do this, do this. And God knows how many years he had had it like that. But yeah, yeah. What a beautiful thing to whoever's left over, you know, to pick up the pieces. Right. You can just say, oh, here's where the funeral home is. Here's the number to this. Here's the, you know. Uh, Yeah. I've got that all handled and I feel, um, that I don't want to leave a mess behind for people yeah. to pick up on. And um, I think, um, I know after my first husband died, I prearranged my funeral. Mm-hmm. Because again, I didn't know that I would marry again or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I prearranged my funeral. I had the cemetery plot with my name on. <laughs> and um, I just, I like to feel that, um, that I'm not leaving something behind that people are going to have a real hard yeah. time with, yep. you know, because I was negligent. And I think that's where it gets back to what's hard. Mm-hmm. I feel responsible, very responsible for myself. Yep. Yeah. I'm on my funeral 2.0. I had planned are my you? funeral. <laughs> I planned my funeral 10 years ago. And now I'm like, oh, I don't want that song anymore. <laughs> Definitely not that song. It's, We're doing funny a you, one. it's so funny you say that because I did the same thing. My church wanted to know the hymns. Okay, so yeah. I give the list of hymns and I go, oh, no, no, I like this one better. So I probably changed it three or four times. And my pastor would just laugh at me and say, Oh, yeah, that was a good call. Everyone has that one. Good call. You know, and I said, this is it. Final. I'm not even going to look at it again because I keep changing never my mind. Never say never, Dorothy. Trust yeah, me. Never Everything say I never. Say never and, you know, and I'm thinking, I know my dad said to me before he passed, and we were so close. He said, do whatever you want for my funeral. I won't be here. Yeah. And I think about that. It's true. I won't be here. I need to let go of a lot of stuff <laughs> even now, you know. Like, don't, Thank you don't for obsess, saying that. <laughs> don't obsess over who's going to get what of your stuff because it doesn't matter. It You're really right. doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, that's really good advice. I appreciate mm-hmm. that a lot. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Dorothy, for your time. Well, thank you. Thank you for asking me.